Hi, it's Dan York, and I'm here at ICANN 51 in Los Angeles, California, as you can perhaps tell from the uh, palm trees out here as we've stepped outside the hotel for a few minutes. And I'm here with Eddie Winstead from ISC to talk about BIND and how it works for DNSSEC. So, Eddie, first, maybe you could tell a bit about what's your background or what you do with ISC. Sure. Uh, at ISC these days, I've done uh, lots of consulting with uh, CCTLDs deploying DNSSEC. And I'm also one of the trainers for our DNS and BIND course, as well as our DNSSEC workshop. So BIND is an interesting case because it can be either an authoritative server serving out DNS zones, publishing mm -hmm. data, and so therefore in the DNSSEC world it would be doing the signing, mm -hmm. and it can also act as a resolver, recursive resolver, where it can do the validation. So let's maybe talk about each of those. On the signing side, okay. um, maybe people might like to know they've got BIND around, but maybe could you tell us what's kind of the current state of how BIND works with DNSSEC? Sure, I'll, t I'll take you a little bit through some of the history because when we started out, we did manual signing in BIND, and manual signing was just what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> Edit the files. Quite headache producing. You had to create your keys because DNSSEC uses asymmetric cryptography. You had to create the keys, insert the keys into the zone file, Resign uh, your zone, and then every time you made a change, you had to re-sign your zone. If you didn't make a change, you had risk of your signatures expiring because you have to keep updating your yeah. signatures. Right. So we did. So there, there was that, and there was uh, lots of pain and grumbling <laughs> and and whatnot. Um, and then we introduced um, a way that you could do sort of uh, automatic signing. You could do create your keys and have Bind do all the signing for you, but you had to switch to dynamic updates. And a lot of people did not like using dynamic updates. I was one included. <laughs> I did not like dynamic updates until DNSSEC. Okay? Uh, these days we have what we call inline signing. And inline signing, uh, I can't stress enough how wonderful it is because all you do now is you create your two keys, you um, tell Bind where to find those keys. You do not have to put them in the zone file any longer. You just tell Bind where they are. And um, then you make two edits to your zone configuration in namedy.conf, and you're signed. Now, do you have to go back and update that when you change your zone or anything? Or what, how does it work? No, Bind automatically takes care of all that for you. So. so basically you can sign it and just let it keep running as you go and do your DNS updates and everything else. Correct. And the, the other really nice thing about inline signing is that if you have the big black magic provisioning system that we all have, if you have a hidden master or some crazy provisioning system with lots of scripts, you don't have to touch any of that. You can do inline signing sort of on a, you can do it either on a uh, hidden master or on, a, on another box where you just zone transfer in your zone and the signing happens there. So you're able to keep all your provisioning and all the ways you edit your text files or whatever you do to add and modify DNS records, you can keep that all the same. So that all gets comes over to the main bind server yes. and then it, uh, and bind then just takes care of all the signing. Correct. So this is called what? Inline signing. All right. I think we'll, we might mention that again. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, but, and, and that's really a key point because when we've looked at the tools, one of the challenges people have had with DNSSEC is keeping, uh, keeping the signing going. Because yeah. as you're aware, every time that you uh, modify that file, you've got to go and update that. So the inline right. signing is binds mechanism for doing that, although that yes. term is kind of widely used, I think, in the larger industry around how to do this. Now, on the resolver side, what do you, how easy do you make it to, to get DNSSEC validation happening? If you want to turn on DNSSEC validation in a bind resolver, you make two edits to your namedy.conf. You say DNSSEC enable yes and DNSSEC validation yes. So you just turn two things and you change them, I guess, from no to yes? Well, actually, these days in the later, the newest versions of bind, it's actually on by default. Very cool. So, in fact, actually, if you've just installed a new bind, uh, you don't have to do anything because it's already doing validation. Correct. So, if you're out there and you're using bind, I guess the question would be find out if you're doing validation, or, and if you're not, go make these changes in the config file, okay? Yes. So, now, uh, you also mentioned uh, earlier to me that you were doing some DNSSEC training. What's involved with that? So, that is, uh, it's a three-day workshop. And, uh... <laughs> but, I, wait, I, I, I want to know. How do you do three days on two lines of config files? Days. Okay. Well, in the old days when we had to teach or when we did teach manual signing, 
We had to spend a lot of time talking about why you want to deploy DNSSEC. We had to talk about the threat vectors, the um, attacks that have been carried out, so that people were very motivated about why they're going to deploy DNSSEC. So that when we got to the manual signing and everyone got a headache, they would still be motivated to soldier on, so to speak. These days with inline signing, it's so much easier. It, what it allows, in the, in the old days, really, we would hope to get through the class with everyone having a sign zone. Mm -hmm. With inline signing, everyone in the class will have a sign zone, no matter their level of experience with bind. Because it's just two lines in a config file. It's just that easy. Yeah. So it gives us time to practice things like key rollovers, algorithm rollovers, um, converting from insect to insect three sign zones. That's what we spend the time on now. Now you mentioned in there uh, changes like algorithm roles. Mm -hmm. Why would somebody want to do an algorithm role? of a key. Okay, so typically, um, depending on how, how high of a value target you are, is how you make your decisions based on both your algorithm that you're going to use and your key size. So over time, that may change or you may find that certain algorithms are no longer as um, safe as they once were considered to be, so you may want to do an algorithm rollover. Okay, and again, that's easy to do in terms of what the server allows you to configure. Yes, these days it's easy, yes. Because of? Inline signing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then the other piece, I speak of the key rollover, on the, on the validator side, on the mm -hmm. validating resolver mm -hmm. side, you know, one of the topics we're talking about here this week is this whole concept of, of rolling the root key of DNSSEC right. to be able to have a new trust anchor, mm -hmm. a new, an updated for algorithm reasons, key length, all those kinds of things. So how does bind work as far as um, if at the point in time that we do roll the root key, how will that work for bind? So there's two options you can do. One is, uh, if you've already turned this on, you're familiar with the trusted key statement in namedy.conf, and that's how you establish the root trust anchor. Um, if, you, if you can continue to use that, and when a new root key is published, you can add that key to the one that you already have, and you can continue on with that as long as you like. There's also a new directive called manage keys, and that is per the RFC 5011 spec in that if you, have, if you start up NAMD with a trusted key um, and the authority for that zone puts in a new key, after some period of time, you can begin to trust that key. So it will work really with either the automated, the 5011 mechanisms, or just a manual update that you might do under your own decisions? Yes. But okay. the caveat being, we'll be doing a lot of testing before that time, <laughs> just to make sure it's very critical that, All right. it, that it works. So. Uh, yes. It is. Now, I've also heard that you folks are working on some new documentation. Could you perhaps say a bit about that? Sure, absolutely. Um, we have had lots of uh, uh, questions about our documentation, and our apologies for that. Um, <laughs> sometimes people say our, our documentation is actually too technical, so we uh, have engaged actually with uh, another group of folks that is uh, writing some DNSSEC documentation for us that we hope will bridge the gap between sort of the, the extremely technical parts of it with uh, how someone, an operator or almost a layman's uh, version of DNSSEC can deploy DNSSEC. So that will be out by the end of this year. Very cool, very cool. So if people want to learn more and they want to get started with Bind, where do they go? Sure, they can go to isc.org and there's lots of information out there um, about how to deploy DNSSEC, uh, where to download Bind. Um, so please do and please use Inline In signing. signing. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you for your time, Eddie. This is Dan York. I've been here at ICANN 51 in Los Angeles. And if you'd like to get started with DNSSEC, just go to Deploy360, which is at www.internetsociety.org slash deploy360 slash start. We'll bring you to our Start Here page where you can find resources uh, to learn more. So thanks again, Eddie. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. Bye for now.